someone sets up in business, supplying goods and services, what's to prevent them charging whatever they like? The answer is competition. There are other people out there also trying to sell those goods and services. Sometimes people compete on quality. Buy our cars because they last twice as long as the other guys. Some people compete on location. We're more convenient. Hey, we're selling you ice cream in the middle of a park on a hot summer's day. But generally, and for the, in the vast majority of cases, the competition is on price. Buy our stuff because it's cheaper. You'll have more money left in your pocket, so you'll be better off if you buy our goods. And people compete on price, and they do so only because their competitors are doing the same. Supermarkets, by the hour, watch what their rivals are charging and try and match them. And the reason is, they want the trade. It's trade that creates wealth, and if you don't have people coming through your doors, you're not doing the trades and you're not creating the wealth. So you've got this paradox. You need to lower your prices to get the customers in, but because they're low prices, you don't make as much profits as you would do otherwise if you had a monopoly. Now, how do people in business try to get around this? Adam Smith, the great man himself, famously said, people of the same trade or profession rarely meet, even for merriment and diversion, but the talk turns to the fixing of prices or some new conspiracy against the public. People of the same trade, when they get together, like to have price rings and cartels, and only the law stops them. For the eminently sensible reason that it's fraudulent, it is a conspiracy against the public. There have been other ways in which people have tried to escape competition, and one of them is state-sanctioned monopolies. Charles I didn't like recalling Parliament to vote in more taxes because they kept trying to limit his powers. So he sold monopolies to his rich friends. And one guy had the monopoly for selling soap, another one salt, another one bricks. And they paid him vast amounts of money to sustain his government without Parliament. But of course, people ended up paying more for their bricks and more for their salt and more for their soap because there wasn't any competition you know, to drive the prices down. Big producers can collude with government and say, you must make it harder for people to enter. No, no, we're doing this in the interest of safety and higher standards. Oh, it's nothing to do with keeping our prices up. Uh, and so they try to impose all kinds of conditions and barriers against entry. For example, if, if hairdressers were required to undergo a two-year course of training, you understand in the interest of safety and quality, before they were allowed to cut anyone's hair, uh, guess what would happen? tell you now, there'd be fewer hairdressers around and you'd have to pay a lot more for a haircut. Once people are allowed to squeeze out competition and control the prices from the producer's point of view, the, the consumer suffers every single time. Fundamentally, competition is almost like evolution in nature. It's what drives up quality, it is what drives down price, it is what brings innovation. Everybody wants to come in with some new tweak, some new twist, some new product or process, some new angle that will enable them to beat their competitors. That's what drives a free economy. Madsen Perry attempted to prove once again that economics is fun.